What's up guys, my name is Ace and today I want to talk about the things that I feel maybe need a little bit of a tweak or a change in Advanced Warfare uh, to make this game reach its full potential. This is in no way meant to be me bashing Advanced Warfare in any way at all. I absolutely love this game so far, I'm really enjoying myself, but I feel like there's a few things that are kind of holding it back. And at its core, I feel like it is a better game than Ghosts ever was. So I feel like it's got a great base, but they just need a little bit more polish and there's a few things that need tweaking in the game. Let's get into it. Alright guys, so the first thing that I have to mention here at the beginning is the leg and the leg compensation system. I know a lot of people have been experiencing this and I experience it uh, relatively oft often as well with this game. And that is, uh, it seems like it takes maybe seven or eight bullets to kill an enemy. And yet on your screen, it seems like it takes them two shots to kill you. So you die extremely quickly, but you don't kill as quickly as you seem to die. And that's just lag compensation. And it's just not uh, balanced and tweaked yet properly. Uh, that does take time. Uh, if you remember from the beginning of Black Ops 2, a lot of people had the exact same complaint. Uh, it was nearly unplayable for me in the first few months of Black Ops 2. I had some really serious issues with lag compensation. But it ended up leveling out over time, and it always seems to level out over time. So I am confident that this will work itself out, but at the moment it is really frustrating. The next little issue that I have with this game, and this is a lot more specific and relatively minor, is the speed reload glitch. Uh, so there's a bit of a glitch with the speed reload, just in case you aren't aware. Uh, basically there's an ability to speed reload, so reload faster by double tapping the reload button. So X on Xbox One or Xbox 360, I guess, and square on PlayStation, and then whatever reload is for PC, probably R. Um, basically, yeah, if you double tap the reload button, it's it'll give you a quick reload, but you dump all of the ammo that you have in your current magazine that's in the gun. Uh, and that kind of makes sense. I like that. It's a cool system on paper. It looks really neat. And I like the option to have that. So if you really get into a pinch and you have to reload quickly, you can reload quickly, but you have to sacrifice some ammo for that. And I like it, but the timing is all off for multiplayer. So a lot of the times uh, with certain guns in particular, especially the AK-12, it seems to read a single click uh, very often as a double click. So it'll speed reload when you're just trying to do a regular reload. And because of this, I find I'm run running out of ammo very, very often, especially when I'm trying to go on a streak. And it can get quite frustrating. So I know they have addressed this, and they are currently working on it for their first patch. So basically all they have to do is increase that time that it takes uh, between the double clicks. And I feel like it'll work itself out. It's basically just has to do with the fact that it's online. Uh, in a private match, I find it works perfectly. But when it's online, it just may read a single click as a double click sometime because, or sometimes because of the, uh, the timing issue. So I'm really confident that will be worked out within the next few weeks as soon as that first patch comes out. I'm pretty confident that it will be addressing that issue, but I wanted to mention it in this video anyways, because it has been uh, causing a lot of frustration with myself. Moving on to the next thing that I would like to see tweaked or fixed, uh, that's the score streaks. Uh, I find that the score streaks are very difficult to earn in this game, and not only are they difficult to earn, but they're not nearly as powerful as, say, Black Ops 2. Now, I realize that Black Ops 2 streaks maybe were a little bit on the powerful side and maybe a little bit too easy to earn for the power that they had. I'm thinking of like the Swarm and, and the higher end streaks like that. Uh, but in this game, I feel like when you earn a high end streak, like if you earn a Paladin, it feels like, I don't know, it feels like you can only get a couple kills with it. it I've found myself earning Paladins and only earning like one or two kills. And earning a Paladin in this game is not an easy feat by any means. It's one of the most difficult streaks to earn in a Call of Duty, I've noticed. Especially when you have some modules on it, and you want to upgrade it a bit. So if you wanted to make a Paladin, basically an AC-130, you have to get so many kills, especially in an objective game mode like Domination, you have to get so many kills and captures mixed in there to be able to earn that, and then it's not nearly as rewarding when you actually do earn it. You only get a couple kills out of it. And I find that to be very frustrating, so I feel like they need to tweak the numbers as far as earning score streaks, I feel like they either need to lower the requirement to earn the score streaks or they have to add uh, more ways to earn score or more score for a uh, kill or for capturing flags or for getting capture kills. Uh, I just feel like it isn't enough, especially in objective game modes. I find Team Deathmatch is the most effective 
uh, game mode to build streaks up because you do get that 100 points a kill. But then again, there's that uh, score limit or that there's that kill limit in Team Deathmatch. So going on a high streak isn't really all that viable a lot of the time because the score limit will be reached by the time you even get to your high streak. So it can be very frustrating and I feel like if you are going to have the weakened streaks that only get you a few kills, even when, when you're on the higher end streaks, I feel like they should be a whole lot easier to earn. Either that or they should do some uh, tweaking. Actually, I, I think they should do this on top of adjusting the score. They should do some tweaking with like cooldown timers and things on, on, for instance, like the Warbird. You can only fire like in small bursts with your gun and then there's a cooldown timer and the streak doesn't last all that long in the first place. So if you end up hitting that cooldown, then you basically just wasted half of your streak. And I just find like it's not very rewarding to earn kill streaks, and it makes it so I don't even really care about earning score streaks. And part of the thing that really gets the adrenaline going and gets your dopamine going in Call of Duty is earning a score streak and feeling rewarded for earning that. So I feel like they need to bring that feeling back by either making it easier to earn score streaks or making the score streaks more powerful. Now, the next thing I want to talk about is the stat system. Now, I feel like uh, the decision to remove stats from the public eye so you can't view other people's combat record, uh, there was definitely a conscious decision, I think, that I think is designed to discourage people from camping and trying to play specifically for a kill-death ratio or something like that. And it may actually work. But having said that, I feel like it takes a lot away from the game. A lot of the game for a lot of people is playing to improve their kill-death ratio and to show it off to friends and and uh, people in their lobby and things like that. I'm not one to specifically play for kill-death ratio, but I do kind of enjoy showing off my score per minute and, and seeing that I am the top of the lobby in score per minute. Or I like seeing other people with high score per minute and I like challenging them. I like seeing that th this guy is going to be a really big challenge and I can't wait to play this game. It's going to be a really competitive game and I want to see if I can either, either make him rage quit or just beat him. And I really miss that from previous games, especially from Black Ops 2. I really liked how they had the lobby leaderboard system. So you could bring up that lobby leaderboard and it was sorted by score per minute. And I feel like score per minute is the best indication of how much of a fight your enemy was going to put up. Not necessarily skill, but how much of a fight they were going to put up. And it, it actually affected how I would go into a game, like the mindset that I'd go into a game with. If they had a really high score per minute, I thought this is going to be a really tough game. I'm going to use lower streaks and I am really going to push the objective hard because these guys are going to fight back. Whereas if they had lower ones, I might have gone for the higher streaks and played a little bit more passively because I could get away with that while still uh, comfortably winning the game because the enemies weren't confident or didn't care enough about the objective. So I really hope they'll bring back at least the lobby leaderboard. I can see why they made combat records private, but I'd also like to see that go public with the option to opt out. So I'd like it to be by default, combat records are easily or publicly uh, viewable, so I can go on to anybody in a lobby or anywhere, and I can look at their combat record just like in Black Ops 2. But if they don't want people to see it, they can opt out and make it so their stats are private, but then they can no longer view other people's stats. I think that's a fair trade-off. So that's one little tweak I'd like to see to the stat system. All right, so I was going to talk about a bunch of other things, but this video is already starting to get longer than I expected, so I will mention one last thing, and that is a little bit of weapon balancing, uh, especially with the assault rifles. Now, I don't want them to completely destroy assault rifles and nerf them into oblivion, and then suddenly the SMGs are the most powerful, but I feel like they do need to make a few tweaks to the assault rifle category, uh, particularly the BAL. I know a lot of people are saying that the BAL is overpowered, I'm not sure if I would label it as overpowered, but it is quite powerful and it is very popular at the moment. And I feel like it could use a wider hip spread. And I feel like all of the assault rifles should have idle sway back. If you guys didn't know, uh, Drifter actually did a video, video about this. I'll see if I can link it in the uh, description below if I remember to. Hopefully I will. Uh, none of the assault rifles have any idle sway. And idle sway is basically when you're aiming down sight, uh, the gun will randomly sway left and right, up and down a little bit, and that prevents you from just locking on and being dead on target at all times. And in Advanced Warfare, there is no idle sway, so even across the map, you can hold your sight completely stable on an enemy, or on where you think an enemy is about to poke his head out, 
and I feel like that discourages movement a little bit. It just allows it allows you to lock down areas too easily, and I feel like adding Idle Sway would actually make a big difference for people's ability to navigate the map more more properly with SMGs and shotguns and things like that. And it would also make snipers more viable, because now an assault rifle can't just lock onto you from across the map. He's got that little bit of sway to deal with. So I feel like it would make all of the other weapon classes more viable if they just added idle sway to the assault rifles. And then maybe they could have some minor balancing tweaks as far as damage and range goes, but I'm not going to mention any specifics with that. The other tweaks that I'd like to see with the weapon balance is with the shotguns. I would like to see, especially with the TAC-19, since it is a pump action shotgun, I believe it's a pump action. It behaves like a pump action anyways, I don't know how that directed energy stuff works, but uh, it, there, it does take time between each shot. I feel like that should have a more effective one-hit kill range. I've tried many times to be, like, to get a good gameplay with the TAC-19, and I can navigate the map great, get the enemies right up close, and I find it's very inconsistent for me to get a one-hit kill with the TAC-19. I feel like that range should be increased just a little bit, not too much. I don't want it to be overpowered and extreme. But there's a lot of cases where I feel like I deserved a kill because I navigated the pro map properly. I got within what I thought should have been a one-hit kill range. And I get a hit marker. And then, of course, I die because you do die fairly quickly in this game. So I feel like the TAC-19 especially could use a little bit of a buff. So that's going to have to wrap it up for this video. There's a bunch of other really minor things that I wanted to mention, but I simply don't have time for that. Once again, I just want to restate that I am not trying to hate on this game. I feel like this game has a lot of potential, and I'm simply trying to offer my suggestions to make this game the best that it can be. I actually feel like if a bunch of these suggestions are that I have here are implemented into the game, I feel like this could end up being my new favorite Call of Duty. At this point, it's still Black Ops 2. I feel like Black Ops 2 is my favorite Call of Duty. But I feel like Advanced Warfare has the potential to basically take the number one spot for me personally. So what do you guys think about this? Do you agree or disagree with some of the change that I'm suggesting? Or are there some other tweaks or changes that you would like to see with this game that you think would make this a better game overall? Let me know in the comment section below. If you enjoyed the video, a like rating is always appreciated, and don't forget to subscribe for more if you haven't already. I'll talk to you guys next time.